Hello there amazing and wonderful geeky people of YouTube So today we are going to talk about a little bit of a controversial thing I guess you will call it It's a little bit of a class Or crash, or not class but it's a like a old I was about to say old people but The old way of thought versus the new way of thought Kind of like botching heads a little bit here That's from my experience anyway And that is how people look at swap partition versus swap files I've seen all kind of people advocating for partitions versus files. Uh, should you even have it or should you not have it? It's a little. Uh, I really don't know how to say this without sounding arrogant and shit like that. But I'm a, of this belief that you should have at least a swap file. I have some virtual machines running without any swap partition or swap files. No problem whatsoever. Ever ever I have had physical hardware running with swap files and swap partition or without them. Uh, actually, the last time I used the... Uh, uh, not not this install, but the last install I had on my physical hardware for six months didn't have a swap file, but I have 32 gigs of RAM, so I thought it was not enough and I had, haven't had any problems to be honest with it. But then if you're on a laptop, you need to hibernate and stuff like that. And there are, if you go into Ubuntu Wiki, they give you some really, really over simplified reasons why you should have it. They all valid reasons. Like I said, big programs like LibreOffice takes up a lot of RAM and they could benefit some swap from some swap uh, space either on a file or a disk. The same with um, like uh, Blender and stuff like that. If, if we go into it here, you know, I've, I've tried to find the most recent uh, conversation about this, but for some reason, they are all like from 2009, 2008. I think that was about the time when swap file became was starting to be optimized uh, uh, for the or the Linux kernel was starting to be optimized for swap files and all that. So I think that was where you know when it started to become a reality and people were like, oh, should I do this or should I do that? And I would get, I will I will not read everything. Well, I don't think I would put um, links to this this down below because. If you already have made up your mind, you have already made up your mind. No matter what I say, can make you change it. I'm just trying to give you a little bit of facts here. And one of the facts is from the Arch Wiki. And they t Arch Wiki, hate or, or love Arch. They have one of the best documentations out there. They have, they, they tend to what they have in their documentation is fact checked. So it's 99% of the time it's true. So let's, let's go into it here. This is actually on the Arch Linux uh, forum on Reddit. So someone here, which is better for swap partition, uh, swap partition a file? And then people give their opinions. And it's like I said, some say no, some say there's no performance benefits. Some go for file because they can resize it and all that. Some go for partition. Some go without it. It's like I said, it's a little bit of a mixed, mixed bag here. And again, like I said, if you want a, a, a file or you want a, a disk space, I'm kind of like the file guy if I should choose for the reasons here that you can resize it with no problems and whatsoever. There was an older uh, article, or not older, but an older a, a question about this like from 2009. And there was a dude in there talking about the, the, I cannot remember what kernel it was. It was either the four point something or the two point something, but he explained how the Linux kernel have been optimized or was starting to optimize for swap files and blah 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 and all that. So he asked here, which is better and blah 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 and all that. And there's a dude here from the wiki. And then he says, hey, no, there's no performance performance averages or average to either a configure or continuous swap file or a partition. Both are treated the same way. And that was what the guy was talking about, like I said, from 2009, I was reading about that uh, respond to like stock exchange or what it was, uh, I think it was stock exchange he was talking about it. But he said that Linux was, uh, the Linux kernel people were working on making it, you know, optimizing it for swap file and all that. And it was treated the same way. And then here you have people, like I said, not using it, using it, using partitions, using uh, a swap file. And if you go into this here in the Arts Wiki, it basically here like tells you a little bit about what swap space is. Swap space can take can take the form of a disk partition or file. Use, users may create a swap space during installation or at any time they desire. Swap space can be used for two purposes: to extend the virtual memory beyond the installed physical memory RAM. I used that a lot back in the day when I didn't have so much much RAM. Nowadays, my swap 
partition is not or either a partition or file is not that big it's just like a in worst case scenario because i have like i said 32 gigs of ram aka enable sw swap and also for suspend to disk support so if you have a laptop you kind of need it uh, if it's beneficial to enable swap depends on the amount of installed physical memory and the amount of memory required to run all the desired programs if the amount of physical memory is less than the, the, required, the required amount, then it, it is beneficial to enable swap. So again, if you let's say you only have 2 gigs of RAM or something like that, yes, a swap partition or swap file will benefit you a lot. If you are like me or some of the other guys that have like <laughs> 124 gigabytes of RAM or 64 gigs and stuff like that, the chances are that you are not going to run out of memory. But like I said, I'm, I'm one of those guys that just in case, so I always have, if if it's a system I have installed on or on my physical hardware, I try to at least have a swap file that's like at least 8 gig or something like that. This avoids out of memory conditions. So if you have less RAM, then the only programs running are needed. If you have a um, swap file partition, you will avoid running out of memory. Where the Linux kernel OOM killer uh, also, uh, mechanism will automatically attempt to free up memory by killing processes. So if you have a system that don't have enough RAM and you run too many programs, it will try to kill off uh, programs basically. To increase the amount of virtual memory to the required amount, add the necessary difference as swap space. So let's say you're running all the programs. Uh, oh, it's actually give you an example here. For example, if your programs require 7.5 gigabytes of memory to run, and there are 4 gigabytes of physical memory installed. Add the difference of 3.5 into a swap space. Add more swap space to account for future requirements. So like I was trying to say here, if you have 2 gigs of RAM and when you run everything you need 4, you just amp up your, your swap space. It is a matter of personal preference. Like I said, again, files versus um, disk space and how much do you need and all that. If you prefer pro programs to be killed or or enabling SWAT. The biggest drawback to enable swap is the lower performance. Oh yeah, what they mean here is like, if a program runs in your swap space, either on a, on a hard drive or swap file, it will be running slower than if it's running on physical memory. Because physical memory have, you know, it's directly uh, in, uh, connected to the hardware not all that. You can kind of think of it like this. If you are running Linux on a virtual machine, it will always run slower than it will run on physical hardware because it's emulating a system. That's kind of simplified version of, of saying what a swap file or swap space is doing. It's emulating RAM. So it's not as fast as physical RAM. And then it's talk, it talks down here about how to enable and then see it and blah, blah, blah. Here is it note, there's no performance advantages to either a continuous swap file or a partition. Both are tre tre treated the same way. And that's what I have been read up about or read about here for the last couple of months on and off is that the kernel see no different the kernel treat it the same way i have to say this though there is a little bit performance to gain where you put your swap partition on a spinning hard drive in the beginning or at the end a lot of people seem to be of the conclusion that if you put your swap partition on a spinning hard drive in the beginning of the hard drive closest to the read head, it's a little bit faster. But now we are nitpicking here. It's not like you it's not like night and day, it's like minute things. So if you have a spinning hard drive and you just want those extra milliseconds of performance, it could benefit you. That's the only performance difference I've seen people talking about on a spinning hard drive, not on an SSD, but a spinning hard drive. But compare a, a, a hard drive to a swap file, like they said here, there's no performance enhancement out there. And I know some of my good friends on, on, on YouTube here are really advocating swap partitions. No problem with that. If you like swap partition, that's what you'll get used, got used to, and, and it floats your boat. You do what do as you please. I'm not telling you here that you should only go and use swap files. I, I can see some advantages to swap files. It's easy to resize them and blah blah and all that, you know. Or you can even even delete them if you don't need them anymore, or you think you don't need them anymore. Thoughts on here's another one. Thoughts on swap partition. Uh, they, they're talking about the BTRFS file system. Uh, which now have you can now enable swap files in the BTRFS. 
a lot of people call it border file system, but it actually, is, I think it was originally named beta file system or something like that, but people just call it border file system. And here, again, they are talking about the same points here. Some say, you know, it's easy to resize it if it's a file. Some say, oh, I always use the partition. And it's basically just eating, beating a dead, dead horse. But And then you have here, this is a guy that talks a little bit about should you have a swap partition at all? Like I said, some distributions default if you don't want to hibernate, I think. I can't remember if it's if if it's Mantiao, but there are some partitions, uh, not partitions, some distributions out there that if you want through their Calamaris installer or some other installer, and you say, okay, I don't want hibernation, they take away a swap just in general, like there's no swap file or there's no swap partition. And this dude here basically say, well, it's always good to have one. Like I said, you can get a little bit performance increase if you run out of RAM, or it could basically also see it like this if you have a program like a, a background process that's running let's say the update manager that don't necessarily need to be in a physical ram that could be be held up in the block partition a swap file because that speed is not important there so it could put it over there that so when you are opening up blender or a game or some big programs they don't have to fight for the space but it's only in in places where you are close to your maximum uses of your ram in my case, like I said, with 32 gigabytes, I have more than enough headroom. Uh, even here, when I'm running on uh, 4 gigs in my virtual machines, it seems to be okay for just like me browsing the internet and all that. But you you could you can you can kind of understand why he's saying it's a good idea because it, I think the kernel again this is just me speculating, but what I have read is that the kernel can also understand okay what program is more important so. Like I said, like the update manager can be pushed to like swap the swap partition or swap file because it's not that necessary for that program to like you utilize all the speed. Where like Blender and gaming and rendering and all that take place in the physical RAM. I think uh, Windows have the same kind of deal with theirs also uh, with their kernel, and I think Mac OS also have it. It's kind of like are they calling it prioritized? processing or memory management or something like that it's something i read long long time ago in some fucking article and all that stuff there so don't don't hold me up on that but i think there's something about that that the operating systems now they are so smart that they can differentiate between programs running in memory which one should be one or physical and which one should not therefore you can get a little bit of increased advantages but it's not night and day and he talks a little bit about it here I could maybe put this one down below if you want that. I think I will do that if you want to um, to see what what he's talking about here. He's talking. This is also server uh, talking about servers and server take up a lot of RAM for a lot of time. But yeah, but like like I said here, I couldn't find anywhere. Well, I I researched this for like today when I'm making this video. I researched this for like 15 minutes on top of like I spent like the last. I think it started in October last year. I started to, to think about this swap versus swap file. So I have continuously found articles and read up about it, but a lot of them was really, really old. And I have not found anyone in the last 15 minutes or 30 minutes while I was researching for this video. I have not found any specific newer information or I have not found uh, like a quote from Linus Torvalds or, or any of the, uh, the kernel developers saying that this is the case but like i said the art wiki tends to be reliable information and they tend to have their facts straight like it's the go-to for information and, and and all that so they tend to be validated and if they say there's no performance advantages i tend to believe them i i just wish and i'm sure it is it's out there I'm sure it's out there, but I kind of like when I found this, I was like, this is all I need because I trust the arts wiki that much. It, it, again, it could be my fault, but if you guys have any documentation, that's if it's older than two years or three years, uh, I can't use it. it. It has to be 2019, 2020, uh, 2000, late 2018, thereabouts. If you have any like hard data, either. The kernel developers telling us that swap partitions is better than swap files or faster, or you have someone that has done independent performance benchmark on more than one occasion, or it's been done by more than one person. 
I will listen to it and I will see it and I will and I may even make a video about it. But I haven't found that. I even look at Fionix and what they call the benchmarking guys and all that. They're just talking about it. But it seems like there is no difference. You can do what you please. The only thing, like like I said, that people tend to agree with is that go with no swap whatsoever is like kind of like yeah you can do it if you have enough of RAM, but. It's not the best and you should have at least a couple of gigabytes of swap file or swap space. And again, nowadays, uh, nowadays, <laughs> nowadays, where, you know, you get gigabytes of gigabytes of um, hard disks thrown at you for no money. You can, like, you don't even need to have a swap file on your main hard drive, on your SSD, or you could use it on your gaming hard drive or something like that. Take like a couple of gigabytes of that for a swap partition or swap file. But anyway. I know a lot of you guys will either disagree with what's down here and some of you don't even give a fuck. Uh, and some of you will tell me that there's definitely a performance difference even though they cannot back it up. And they say, I can feel it. Yeah, what you feel and what's reality is two different things. It's, it's kind of like the same thing, you know, you upgrade your CPU or you upgrade your RAM and your system just seems like it's 10,000 times faster than it was before, but in reality it's only like 1 or 2%. It's, it's this like... A placebo effect if you can say it like that it's the same like oh this new dress make me look uh, dress or this new clothes make me look so much slimmer than i was before again it's ju just something you tell yourself so i need I, I want facts i want hard evidence and it's it, again what you feel and what you heard you i need papers i need uh, a statement from someone credible and i want it from more than one credible source Unless it's like from Linus Torvalds mouth himself or the current development team. Then okay, but if it's like a, a YouTuber or if it's a, um, what you call it, a, a website or something like that, give, give me more than one source that say the same thing from independent people. But anyway, that was just my little talk about swap file versus swap partitions. So um, don't hate me. And again, like I said before, if you want a partition, do, you do your partitions. I don't really really care it's it's all preferences in the end some like beef some like chicken <laughs> you know we don't we don't have to be uh, enemies because of that or become enemies because of that see you all later bye bye